Good morning, everybody. Alan Denman here, writer on a boat. And just to reiterate, this is for all writers and storytellers wanting to learn more about the art and craft of storytelling. And also for readers and viewers and people who want to have a deeper appreciation by understanding the secret mechanics of storytelling. And the first thing I'm going to address today is really that this is a very broad subject because I'm not focusing just on one narrative form. And this comes from my own experience of having written in really every narrative form there is short story, novels, screenplays, radio play, and stage plays as well. So um, I understand that there is a common link, a common thread between all these uh, different forms. And that is, the, the thread is, it, it's about story. And uh, there are different ways to tell stories, of course, but there are certain core fundamental principles. And uh, if a very simple distinction uh, that might help you is to think of this. Um, you could say very simply, a film is a story told in pictures and a novel is a story told in words. So you, you just think about films for a moment. Most of the information is conveyed through the visual image. Of course, there are other layers are added. Uh, there is some dialogue, there's music and sound design as well. But the predominant vehicle for conveying information is visual. Now, when you come to a novel, it's, it's very different. It is words, words, words. It's, it's, that's all you have as a novelist. As a storyteller uh, and a novelist, you have only words to rely on, which is perfectly okay. It's still storytelling. So the question is then, uh, you know, how do you tell a story? What, what is your chosen form? Um, some people, you know, prefer a minimalist form like uh, screenwriting which is actually, in my experience, having written many screenplays, the hardest form of writing because you have to pare everything away. One of the golden rules of screenwriting is less is more, which means don't keep adding adjectives and, and long sentences. Pare it right back. How simply can you describe something uh, and yet evoke it? It's really... A screenplay is not much more than a set of instructions to the director, the producer, the actors, the camera uh, man or uh, woman, and uh, everybody involved in producing that film. It's really a set of instructions. And therefore, you keep it very, very brief. Whereas a novel goes the other way. So you might want to say in a screenplay, um, uh, she entered a room that was bare and dilapidated. And that's all you say. Now, in a novel, you could say she entered a room. There was grey wallpaper peeling off the walls, plaster dust scattered all over the floor. And you could go into a lot more descriptive detail, which is great for the reader because we start to imagine this then. We visualize it in our minds. But in a screenplay, you keep it absolutely simple. So they're really polar opposite forms of writing. Um, and uh, you have the opportunity in a novel of really expanding the detail, the character profiles, developing things in a lot more detail in words. OK, so they're a very simple distinction. So I'm just sort of stepping back a little bit. And I know this is a very broad uh, topic for a vlog. Uh, it is the nature of storytelling. But I do think it's very important to understand that there are, is a common thread between all the narrative forms. And oh, just to add, by the way, I'm hand holding this, so it might shake a little bit. I apologies for that. And uh, so that's the first thing. Film is a story told in pictures. A novel is a story told in words. But they're both stories. And that means that the underlying principles of storytelling are going to be very, very similar, if not the same. 
So that's something I want to say there. And then um, really we're going to move on next week to looking at what are the five biggest mistakes that screenwriters and storytellers make. And I'm just going to plant a few seeds, a few ideas now in your minds. And uh, uh, this is to do with how we relate. A lot of the story is being filled in by us, whether we are a viewer watching TV or watching a, a film or whether we're a reader holding our Kindle or a physical book, a paperback and reading. We are filling in a lot of the story and there's a lot of subconscious uh, reactions and responses going on inside us as we watch or read. And it's very important to understand this. Um, and a very simple one, and this is the, really the first principle, or the first mistake that many writers make. I thought I'd catch, do a bit of catching up and subscribe to Now TV, and they've got the first season, season of Succession there. Now, uh, television is slightly different to film. You know, one of the big things I learned about film when I was studying it and writing and lived in L.A. for many years is that most feature films are a single protagonist story. In other words, early on in storytelling, a character is highlighted as being the protagonist, the main character whose journey we are going to go on with them throughout the film. Television tends to operate differently. I've talked a little bit about Game of Thrones, and there, that is an ensemble way of telling a story. And, of course, you think of how many seasons, how many episodes of the Game of Thrones. is massive. It's a feature film, on average, 100, 120 minutes. I can't work off the top of my head, but I think it was eight or nine seasons, maybe eight episodes in each one. So what's that? Eight times eight, 64 episodes, 64 hours. This is massive, isn't it? But what that means is for television, you can develop an ensemble cast, if you're an ensemble protagonist. So you can pick and choose who you wish to support and follow. And if you get bored with that character or you fall out of love with them, then, you know, maybe there's another one that you want to follow and this draws you in. But this is the key to the first principle and the first mistake of storytelling that, car uh, that writers make is presenting a way in to the story is, is through a character. We have to step through the proscenium arch, and you know what a proscenium arch is in, in theatre, it is the arch, and the play takes place on the other side of the arch and that's a make-believe world but how do you get the audience from uh, physically or let's mentally from their seat through the arch into the fantasy world whether it's a, a very realistic world or a true fantasy world like the lion the witch in the wardrobe or something like that how do you get people from their uh, being in centered in their body and their minds there and getting their mind projected into the story world. This is one of the great big secrets of storytelling and one of the mistakes that people make. So you as a storyteller have to make sure that people are engaged. That's maybe one way to put it, but I say it's more than that. You have to stimulate a reader or an audience to the point where they forget where they are and they are now living in that alternate world, that other dimension of the story, either as a physical book or a Kindle, an e-book, or as a film or as television. And that I will talk about next week, but just to bear that in mind, and if you were to really attend to yourself, uh, do you get carried into that world? And what is going on? What is the key thing that will get you to, if you like, so to speak, metaphorically, lift out of your body and enter the world of that story? I'm going to leave it there. And I hope that's uh, 
awoken some thoughts, provoked some thoughts, and I look forward to seeing you next week. That's it. <laughs>